my name's Leslie Abbotton and this is a short story of mine called Music and Silence. When a soul, who is usually slow to anger, does in fact anger, the recipient of that destructive, reconstructive emotion would be advised to stand well back. Janet was one such soul. She was reaching her overwhelmed breaking point. Head in hand, she tried deep breathing, shallow breathing and not breathing, till, red of face and with heart strongly pounding, she finally said, quietly and as calmly as she could manage, Sam, please turn the music off or play it in another room. To her, his description of this sound as music was a joke. All she heard was a tumble dryer filled with rotating heavy things, metal buttons and scratchy zips. Sam opened his mouth to speak but seemed to think better of it. Janet knew he was pissed off and knew that he'd be thinking, why bother having a wife if she can't even understand the most basic parts of my personality? My music makes me who I am. She is always having a go at me for something. All I want is a bit of quiet, Janet continued. Not silence as such, but just an absence of clanging and yelling. It was a fair enough request. After all, this was her home too and should have also been her place of refuge from the all too lively world outside. You think you have problems? I have to put up with asinine pop crap and happy clappy party music for kids. I'd rather listen to nothing. Oh well, if that's all you want. Janet looked at her lover with newly found disdain. He was such a philistine. Or the polar opposite, a music snob. He'd listened to all kinds of weird stuff in the name of intellectual musical expression. Free jazz, for instance. And she'd try to understand and to feel what he felt. But she just didn't get it. Instead, she got a headache. But Sam wouldn't compromise to listen to her choices, which comprised anything R&B or poppy. That was the kind of music she liked. His choices sounded to her like a discordant metal voice choir. Poor guy. He thought music was all about trying so hard and impressing others. It wasn't. She preferred boppy tunes, and why not? You knew where you were with boppy tunes. Sam stared at Janet as if he couldn't believe her no music suggestion, and she could see that the fighter inside him was going to become determined to play the situation and see what emerged. In that case, why don't we make the house a music-free zone, he suggested. What do you mean? Janet had experienced Sam's rulings on such things before, like when they'd both cut out dairy products. She'd soon realised that the rules had been made to be broken only by him. Do as I say, not do as I do. A music-free zone, no music for a month, like we did with the wine in February for charity. We'll do it for charity then, shall we? A silent house? Are we able to watch telly? What about the music in telly programmes? Don't want to get it wrong and start singing along to the casualty theme tune by accident. OK then, no. No telly, no singing, no musical instruments, no radio. And in the cars? Same. It was official. Sam was totally insane and Janet was now thoroughly convinced of it. She would play along though. She liked a challenge. OK. And that was that. That was how it all began, how they both decided that the other's music choices were so repellent that they'd rather give the notes up altogether than be forced to endure another one-directional modern jazz track. The decision had been made. Day three was particularly challenging because Janet just couldn't get a tune out of her head. It was irritating, even more so because she kept singing it at work and out loud too. She decided not to tell Sam. And for Sam, day seven was bad, disappointing too, and confusing. His work took him to a warehouse. There was no way he could block out the sound of the warehouse's radio. He quite enjoyed radio too, but only as a change, of course, and only because he was starved of proper, real sounds. He decided not to tell Janet that Ocean Colour Scene and Celine Dion were swooping round his head for the remainder of the day. By the time day 13 had kicked into life, they were both realising just how badly they were adjusting to the lack of organised sounds. Janet suggested going to the pictures before biting her tongue. Her iPod had never seen so little action, because it wasn't only about not enforcing one's own music choices on another, it was also about not listening anywhere at all. Janet's long hair could have quite easily hidden a small set of earbuds, and she did consider it briefly, but decided against it. It would be blatant cheating, and if Sam found out, she'd never hear the last. Day 19 was a bad one too, as was day 22, and so it continued. 
By the time the 31 days of the month were over, both Janet and Sam were as irritated as hell with their lack of auditory stimulation, but of course neither would admit it, both of them keen to be top dog. The continuation of their scheme for yet another month was lunacy, but it was agreed via a semi-argument and semi-reconstruction of their previous independent roles within the relationship. They were growing apart and couldn't find a way forward. Seven weeks into their auditory experiment, Sam was listening to Radio 4, one of the few safe choices, though the theme music for the radio programmes had to be turned down. And that meant he would often miss the first few seconds of a programme, which undoubtedly he found irritating. But on this day, as he was turning the volume down temporarily, his hand slipped and he pressed the button for Radio 3. Music flowed in. It sounded like a woodwind quartet. The tones were gentle, not soaring or challenging, just gentle, reflecting the beats of his heart. Janet was not at home. He closed his eyes just to enjoy for a second before turning it off. But of course it wasn't turned off. He laid his head back on the sofa and drifted off, enriched by his listening. It was the best nap he'd had in ages. He slept so deeply that he didn't hear Janet come in. He slept so deeply that he didn't feel her cuddle up to him as she joined him in his drifting. She slept in the arms of her man. Sam woke after an hour or so and realised he'd been rumbled. He also realised what had woken him up, the ring cycle on Radio 4. He'd always despised Wagner. Janet woke too. Turn that crap off, she mumbled, still asleep. Common ground. They should listen to Radio 3 more often, thought Sam, provided they didn't have to listen to Wagner. Sam got up and instead of switching the radio off, he turned it onto Classic FM. Whatever it was that came on, they didn't know. But they both sat and listened, enthralled. Like classics. Who would have thought it? The first music they'd allowed themselves to listen to together, and it was good. For a whole night, they sat holding hands, neither wanting to admit that their experiment had been a resounding failure, yet also an overwhelming success. They'd found musical common ground and appreciation, and that was good. They'd also learned how to appreciate the silence and the inactive bond between them. They'd never before been able to sit and hold hands, just listening and not expecting anything more. That was progress too. From that point on, the radio station was permanently set, and it was the only music they'd listened to at home, out loud. Their quirkier choices, the ones that wound the other partner up, were resigned to headphone listening, and that was fine. They'd found a new equilibrium. Life and music and silence and laughter and progress. It was all good. <laughs>